it seems that uh, the uh, DEI hire the cackling idiot Camp Kamala Harris. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you sorry about? No, I'm just sorry. I I don't know why. It's just funny. That's all. Well, everyone knows why she why she's. I know. I know. Vice president. She was a DEI hire. Yes. And with most, as with most DEI hires, you get a significantly, significantly inferior product. And that's what you have here. So uh, apparently there's no question that she is going to be the Democratic candidate for president, if, if you can actually believe that. And I frankly would not, would not have believed that six months ago. Uh, it seemed to me at that time that this 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 truly cackling uh, ind- idiot um, of, of a human being it, it was so obviously unfit in, in incapable and unfit of of uh, performing the, the task of of being president of the united states that even hardcore democrats would not consider at all for, for the job but I was apparently mis- mistaken. <laughs> I understand she has chosen uh, her uh, vice presidential running mate. What can you Correct. tell us about him? Uh, Governor Waltz of Minnesota. Uh, he's a white man. So maybe he's a DEI candidate as well, or selectee. But his um, record on Israel, in all seriousness now, is actually pretty good. But as a vice president, that doesn't really matter at all. What happened from what, I, what I've been able to read right before this uh, podcast was that uh, the Obamas, both um, Barack and Michael, his wife, or whatever she is, it is, wanted Josh Shapiro, the Jewish Democratic governor of Pennsylvania, to be her vice presidential selectee. And I didn't realize this, but apparently the Obamas and um, Ms. Harris do not get on very well. In fact, they're not friends. And she deeply resented, apparently, Harris deeply resented um, the, the pressure, the public pressure the Obamas were putting on her to select um, a Jew like Josh Shapiro with a, an appropriate level of pro-Israel positions uh, that would kind of mitigate uh, her clear animosity towards Israel. Well, she- in other words, in other, Hang on, so you're suggesting that they, they were hoping that she were, or they were pressuring her to go with Josh Shapiro from Correct. Pennsylvania, the governor, because he's Jewish, also another DEI high, apparently. Correct. Um, in order not to completely alienate many traditional Jewish Democratic voters. Correct. And and she didn't buy, she didn't buy into that. No, and uh, she chose. Um, this governor from the Midwest, who now they're trying, the, the Democratic establishment is trying to say was a calculation on her part to win the Midwest by selecting a, a popular governor from Minnesota. Um, I think the issue here that we have to keep in mind was regardless as to the apparent animosity between Ms. Harris and the Obamas. Leaving that aside, there was such a campaign uh, initiated by the left against uh, the selection of a Jewish uh, vice presidential um, personality, if you will, that that's the issue that we have to focus on. She was aware of this. Harris was aware of the of the campaign that was being run by the Democratic uh, Socialists of America um, and by other hardcore 
leftist elements in the Democratic Party not to select a Jew. Didn't matter of what persuasion, political persuasion, didn't matter. The issue was whether it would be wise for her to select a Jew and thereby antagonize um, the left wing and Muslim wing, if you will, of the Democratic Party. The business with the Obamas, I don't think anybody realized until it just came out. What, what a lot of people did realize was this um, effort on the part of the left wing of the Democratic parties to ensure that no Jew was um, the uh, vice presidential selectee. That's the takeaway from all of this. The business with the Obamas is very interesting. Uh, I didn't know about that, um, but it's also irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. What's relevant, especially for the American Jewish community and for us Israelis, is that the hard left of the Democratic Party, the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel hard left of the Democratic Party um, is in the ascendancy now. No question about it. And that uh, they have their presidential candidate right now. The, the vice presidential candidate, honestly, no matter how pro-Israel he is, is it's irrelevant. He has no power at all. She'll use him, in fact, to deflect um, any kind of fallout from anti her anti-Israel uh, decisions. She'll use him as uh, as a deflecting as a deflector, so to speak. But it means nothing. Um, so that's the that's apparently the position we're in right now. Trump. Um, did not listen to his advisors and he went racial on Harris, which may be true. I mean, she's not black in the traditional sense of the word. I mean, she's got Jamaican ancestry on one side and Indian ancestry on the other. And what's interesting and that nobody is talking about is one of her white ancestors was the largest slave owner in Jamaica during colonial days. And I just wish during, if there is a debate, and it's, it's a question as to whether there will be one or not, that um, Trump should should just drop that point. Um, but he did not listen to his advisors um, who, stra who emphasized to him the need to underscore her mismanagement of the southern border because that's something according to polls that a lot of people uh, resonate to um, the fact that she supported uh, the release of rapists and uh, drug dealers and I don't know what else she collected money for it. she organized uh, collections of money for them to make bail I mean, there, there are a whole host of policy uh, decisions that she's made and uh, activities that she's supported that should have should be the focus of Trump's um, attack on her. But he's not making that. He's he's going to an area that he should have avoided. He just should have avoided any mention of her race, except for the fact that her and white ancestor in Jamaica was the largest slave owner there. It doesn't do any good to play the race card right now. It just doesn't do any good because, believe it or not, Trump had a lot of black support, black and Latino support, even against Harris. And that's eroding right now because of his uh, choice to go after her on the basis of race. It's stupid. There are too many really important issues in the United States that people are worried about that he should be concentrating on, foremost amongst which is, is the state of the economy. It looks, it looks right now as if the United States may be going into what's called a black swan event right before the election, 
um, in which uh, the economy goes into a depression, that the um, Wall Street um, tanks. Uh, we're, we're just seeing a little bit of it right now. Some people are calling it a correction. Others are not. Others are saying this is just the beginning of something um, really terrible for the American economy, that uh, unemployment will go through the roof, inflation. We may have stagflation, what they call, where you have inflation and stagnation at the same time. We've had it. They've had it before, and it was horrible. It took them a, quite a while to dig their way out of it. But if it's before the election, and it's possible, um, then there's a, a possibility, a good possibility that Harris uh, may not stand a chance. But that is uh, that's uh, faulty thinking for running a campaign. If it happens, great. Um, how I mean, how do you how do you in fact judge uh, chances? Very good. Very good. And she picked, uh, as far as uh, this governor of Minnesota, smart guy, good politician, white, uh, from the Midwest. That's safe. Um, uninspiring, boring. But again, a DEI, DEI selectee. Um, if Trump keeps doing what he's doing, right now uh, by going after her on the wrong issues, her poll numbers will just keep growing. I mean, that's just the way it works. And what may save him, uh, unfortunately, is if the economy just falls to pieces. And there is a possibility of that happening not, right there's, before the election. There's, there's not much time for that to actually... It can happen overnight. Happen in a... In a, in a uh palpable way before no we... in a palpable way it can happen overnight um the uh, nikkei index in tokyo took one of the i think it was the biggest drop it ever took uh two days ago uh wall street took a massive drop uh, massive hit and things the the fundamentals of the economy are um soft uh, the Biden administration just absolutely mismanaged the economy, something fierce. And uh, it may just unravel right towards the end. And all it takes is one day before the election to have a drop of four or five, six thousand points in Wall Street with the Fed announcing uh, the, the fact that uh, we're going into hyperinflation or something like that. And the numbers on um, uh, unemployment just keep going up one day 24 hours before the election she could lose it with uh, economic news like that she'll definitely lose it um, Trump is already blaming her uh, for the uh, what he called the deplorable state of the economy and people the future, that the may save him hmm? for the future collapse He's for really... the future collapse I mean the fact of the matter is this is what the left wants. If you, you know, read um, Saul Alinsky, this is the big guru of the left um, who dedicated um, his famous book on uh, left-wing mobilization. He actually dedicated the book to the Samech Mem. <laughs> I mean, you seriously, that's what, those, who he dedicated. For those who are unfamiliar with the term to Satan. Yeah. And his philosophy, which Barack Obama subscribed to, was that uh, you have to destroy the economics of a capitalist society um, to crush it under the weight of taxation and uh, welfare payments and what have you, to crush the economy, to make people more amenable to being on the dole from the government. And that once that happens, the, the government, presumably under the control of the left, has control of the country. Um, we've Perfect. seen moves in this Perfect. direction during COVID. No, we saw moves like this during COVID, which was a, a power grab, basically, by the establishment. And uh, this move towards the digital economy where 
we don't have uh, paper anymore. People don't have control of their their money. Um, this is something that the left is all in favor of, including Kamala Harris. She's in favor of this. And no wonder, because one of her main backers is, drumroll, George Soros. Okay. So people have to wake up and in the United States, and they will wake up um, if Trump keeps the focus on the right things. Race is not one of them right now. It's not one of them. Not with uh, him gaining so much support in the within the black community and the Hispanic community. And by the way, uh, I don't know what the numbers are today, but yesterday, um, where 75 to 80% or more of the American Jewish community always voted Democratic in a presidential election, it's up for grabs right now, uh, which is was an amazing story I saw. Um, but I, I don't know what's going to happen if Trump keeps just talking the way he is. Um, at the very least, the Jewish... Uh, community, the the non-Orthodox Jewish community may just not vote. Um, and I don't consider that a viable uh, option for anybody in, in any election, no matter how bad the, the candidates are. Uh, because not voting is voting. Um, perhaps not for the appropriate candidate. Well, we shall, we shall have to wait and see. We'll wait.